And the exercise I'm gonna tell you about in a moment can be done every day if you like, but what the most interesting studies, at least to me, indicate is that you could do the exercise I'll tell you about even just once or twice a week and greatly improve your efficiency of breathing and shift yourself away from over-breathing when at rest, even if you're not thinking about how you're breathing at rest, which has a huge number of positive outcomes in terms of your ability to stay relatively calm, to not get the hyperexcitability of the brain, to greatly improve not just levels of calm and reduce bouts of stress, but also improve nighttime sleep. There are a huge number of benefits, but the first thing we have to do, of course, is determine whether or not you're already breathing in an unhealthy or in a healthy way. And again, when I say healthy or unhealthy, I mean, are you over breathing? Are you under breathing? Are you delivering the appropriate ratios of oxygen and carbon dioxide to the tissues of your brain and body? In order to do this, we're going to do a simple test. I encourage you to sit down, certainly not lie down, but just sit down, I suppose you also could do it standing. And we are going to do what's called the carbon dioxide tolerance test. The carbon dioxide tolerance test is a sort of back of the envelope measure of how well you are managing carbon dioxide. That is how well you can control your breathing at both the mechanical and the chemical level. I'm going to encourage you to be a nasal breather whenever possible. You're also going to want to find some sort of time measuring device, like it could be your phone or it could be a stopwatch. What I'm gonna ask you to do in a few minutes is I'm gonna ask you to inhale through your nose as deeply as you possibly can. That is, you're gonna fill your lungs as much as you can through your nose and then start a timer and measure how long it takes for you to deliberately control that exhale until your lungs are empty. Okay, so this is going to be a controlled exhale through the nose after a big deep breath, remembering that the diaphragm can really help you here to get a deep inhale by having your belly move out while you inhale. And then when I say start, you're gonna measure the time that it takes to do a complete lungs empty exhale. Please prepare to do the big inhale and start inhaling now. So inhale as deeply as you can through your nose, fill your lungs as much as you can. Okay, now, Start, meaning slowly control the exhale through your nose. You're trying to let that air out as slowly as possible. And I'm just going to call out every 10 or 15 seconds or so. And you want to note when your lungs are empty. I know you can hold your breath with your lungs empty. That is not an accurate measure. 15 seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay, for those of you that have already reached lungs empty, please go back to breathing normally. Forty-five seconds. and 60 seconds. Okay, so what we just did is a back of the envelope carbon dioxide discard rate, okay? What I'm gonna tell you now is that if it took you 20 seconds or less to expel all your air, that is you couldn't extend that exhale longer than 20 seconds, in a kind of back of the envelope way, we can say that you have a relatively brief or low carbon dioxide tolerance, okay? If it took you somewhere between 25 and 40, maybe 45 seconds to expel all your air, that is you could control that exhale for about 45 seconds or 30 seconds, then you have a moderate level of carbon dioxide tolerance. And if for instance, you were able to go 50 seconds or longer for that discard until you hit lungs empty, you have a fairly high degree of carbon dioxide tolerance. Now, here's the deal. If you had low carbon dioxide tolerance, that is your 20 seconds or less, you're gonna write down the number three, okay? If you had moderate levels of carbon dioxide tolerance, you're going to write down the number five, or you could even put five to six. And then if you are in that bracket of people that was able to discard your air over a period of 50 seconds or more, you're going to write down the number eight to 10. and. Before we get into what to do with these numbers, I wanna emphasize again, 
This does not have to do with fitness level per se. I know some world-class triathletes that have very fast carbon dioxide blow off times. That is their discard rates are 20 seconds or less. I should also point out that if you're very stressed, that number is going to be very small. If you're very relaxed, like you just woke up after a long night of sleep and you feel great, that number is going to be extended. Okay. So this is a back of the envelope measure that you're going to use each time you decide to do the exercise I'm going to tell you about in a moment. Okay. So what is this exercise? Well, you just got your number, either low, medium, or high bracket number for carbon di dioxide discard rate. Now you're going to do two minutes of what most people would call box breathing. What is box breathing? Box breathing are equal duration, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, repeat. So inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Sounds very easy, right? How long do you inhale and then hold, exhale and then hold? Well, you now know if you were in the low group of carbon dioxide discard rate, your inhale is gonna be three seconds, your hold will be three seconds, your exhale will be three seconds and then you repeat three seconds. So each size of the box, if you will, is gonna be three seconds long. If you were in the moderate carbon dioxide discard rate category, then you're gonna inhale for five to six seconds, hold for five to six, exhale for five to six, hold for five to six, repeat for about two minutes. You could do three minutes if you want, but I think it's important to have protocols that are feasible for most people. And that's going to mean doing things for about two to five minutes when it comes to these breath rehabilitation exercises for restoring normal breathing. And then of course, if you are in the long category of carbon dioxide discard rate, you should be able to do an eight to 10 second inhale, eight to 10 second hold, eight to 10 second exhale, eight to 10 second hold and repeat, okay? That's an exercise that you can do for about two to three minutes, once or twice per week. What's happening when you do that exercise? Well, first of all, you are greatly increasing your neuromechanical control over the diaphragm. This is very important. Most people are not aware of this phrenic nerve pathway in the diaphragm, and you're greatly in increasing your mechanical control over this pathway through the process we call neuroplasticity. When you deliberately focus on a aspect of your nervous system control, in particular nervous system control over musculature that normally is subconscious and you're not paying attention to, and when you actively take control of that, it requires that your brain adjust and rewire the relationship between the different components of that circuit. And the wonderful thing is that has been shown to lead to changes in your resting pattern of breathing. Now, why did we go through the whole business of doing the carbon dioxide tolerance test? Well, for people who don't tolerate carbon dioxide very well, they don't have very good phrenic, that is neuromechanical control of the diaphragm for whatever reason. Again, it doesn't mean you're not fit. It just means you don't have, or you have not yet developed neuromechanical control of the diaphragm. It would be near impossible for you to do box breathing for two or three minutes with eight seconds in, eight seconds hold, eight seconds exhale, eight seconds hold. So that's why we do uh, a test to see what you're capable of doing. You don't want the box breathing to be too strained where you're, where you're really challenged to get around the whole box. You want it to be relatively easy because remember, you're trying to translate this pattern to your normal pattern of breathing. That is your pattern of breathing when you're not consciously thinking about breathing. And what are we really translating when we do this box breathing type exercise? What you're translating is the ability to pause between breaths and yet take full mechanically driven breaths that involve the phrenic nerve and diaphragm. So again, you're encouraging, especially if you use nasal breathing, when you do the box breathing, you're encouraging phrenic control over the diaphragm and you're getting that six liters of air per minute or so using fewer and fewer breaths over time. So this is a, again, zero cost, although it does cost a little bit of time, zero cost approach to adjusting your normal pattern of breathing at rest, which has a huge number of positive outcomes in terms of your ability to stay relatively calm, to not get the hyperexcitability of the brain. There are a huge number of benefits that can come from doing this box breathing exercise, but you gotta get the duration of the sides of the box right, and that's why you do the carbon dioxide tolerance test. Mm -hmm.